Turn to Genesis chapter 43, if you will. Genesis 43, we're going to look here in this chapter, Lord willing, maybe part or, uh, or all of the next chapter. It's really a narrative at the section that we're at. Um, so I believe it will kind of go quickly just looking at the narrative, reading God's word for a big portion of it, uh, and seeing the events that are to unfold. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hear what happens next. I'm kidding. I already know what happens next. I've studied it. I hope you maybe even know what happens next too. Uh, but uh, we'll even leave it a cliffhanger even at the end of 44 and see that great event that will happen after that as well. Uh, if you will, you can entitle the message tonight, Final Testing of Joseph's Brothers. If you would recall where we left off is they finally make their way and they go there to the only place in the region that has uh, food in this time of famine uh, that Joseph knew that God foretold that would, would come. And God saw fit that Egypt was ready for the famine. They saved in those seven years abundance, of abundance that God uh, brought, but then uh, uh, was able to disperse during the famine to everyone that was in need. Well, God, God saw fit to bring uh, Joseph's family uh, to Egypt to get food again family that he hasn't seen for some 20 years and they don't know that they've seen him now again his his um, identity has been disclosed uh, has not been disclosed to them has been hidden uh, and though however what we know happens happens next is we're going to see they're at home now and they're starting to get hungry again um, and Simeon is, if you will, still there with Joseph in the land of Egypt. He's in prison there. And if you would recall what Joseph told them last is, look, if you want to prove to me that you're not spies, of which I accuse you to be, uh, one, I'm going to keep Simeon, but if you ever hope to come back here to get food or to get your brother Simeon, then you must bring your youngest brother, uh, Benjamin, back and prove your story that you indeed all are all brothers just seeking food and not spies. Um, if you'd recall, they go back, and we've seen, though, that uh, Joseph poured out. Is he testing them? Yes, he is. He's testing to see if they've repented, if they've changed from, again, the, the men that they used to be that hated him so much they sought to kill him, but then even tried to make money off of it and sell him into slavery instead. Um, so, again, he's testing them. But if you would recall, he poured out grace on them all throughout the event, um, even sent their money back with them and uh, with their uh, bags full of food for the family. Uh, so much grace has been poured out. I challenge you in these words that we're going to read in a moment as well. Pay attention to the grace, again, that he's going to pour out upon them. Verse 1, though, and before we read verse 1, let's bow to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for this time that we could even simply look to your word that we could read your word that we could study your word even deeper and better understand you and your heart and what you have been working and your plans that you have been working and your desire and your grace and then your also though your will for us we pray that today you would um, teach us of that even just a little bit more and that we would even love you more and that we would go out to serve you even better. Uh, but we love you. We thank you. Please use me as a vessel, but please help us to fix our attention on every word that comes out of your mouth and that we would want to hear what you have to say next. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So again, if you will, Genesis 43, verse 1, it says, And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. So they run out of the provision, the food, the bags of corn that uh, Joseph already sent with them. And if you would recall, um, the family told the father, look, father, if we do want to go back again, he said we must 
uh, bring back our youngest brother. Uh, but if you would recall, this whole time he was adamant, I will not do it. I'm not going to send my favorite and my youngest son and put his life in danger. Um, then verse 3 it says, but again now he's saying we're hungry, go and, and get more food. Verse 3 it says, And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, You shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, um, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as, as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? And they said, The man asked us straightly of, of our state and our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have ye another brother? And, ye, and we told him according to the tenor of these words, Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said unto Israel, and Judah said unto Israel, his father, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou, and also our little ones. I will be a surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him, if I bring him not unto thee. And set him before thee, uh, then let me bear the blame forever. For except um, we had lingered, surely now we had returned this second time. Pause here for just a moment. What happened again? They're out of food. They're, um, they're having no other options. They have to go back. And the father tells them to go back. But again, they tell them. They were, this man, which they don't know it, but it's Joseph, the man who's in control, second in command, but in control of the food dispersion. He was adamant, you will not be able to see my face unless you bring back the brother. Um, and again, uh, but, he, but he's a, he, he doesn't want to send them. But the, bro the brothers, they do say, indeed, the sons, they say um, that we will not go unless you send them with us. Because we know we can't see and get the food if we don't take them with, with, uh, with us to Egypt. Then, if you will, Israel, which is in, in reference to the, the father, again, Jacob. It, but he says, he says to them, why did you do this to me? He knows that he, is, he is, has no other option. He knows he's in between a rock and a hard place. And he gets upset with the sons. And he says, why did you do this to me? Why did you have to go tell them that I have another son? Uh, and again, they tell him. Uh, he simply straightway asked. And we told him. They said, how could we have known that he would um, ask us, you bring him back uh, with you the next time? Uh, but again, we know that he is pleading. He knows he's upset. Um, he knows that he is likely at the only last option to send the son with them. But here's what happens with, with Judah in verse 8 uh, that we just read. But recall this. We're going to see some events happen here with Judah. Judah, if you will, if you would recall, in, in 20 years ago, Judah was the ringleader. Judah was the one, again, which they plotted to kill the brother, Joseph. He was the one that was the ringleader that changed the plans to, well, let's at least make some money off of this. And he sells his brother into slavery. Um, he would sell Joseph into slavery. And again, we know now, for all they knew, he's dead by now. Um, so again, he was the ringleader. He was the one that had maybe the least amount of care um, for Joseph. Um, he, he didn't care if he died, but he figured he would at least benefit um, off of it a little bit. But if you would recall, from that moment until now, do you recall that for the most part, we've only seen and followed the life of Joseph, except for one um glimpse into the life of Judah. And I think that happened for a reason. Again, God was telling us through all of these 20 years, 
All of what we needed to know, we, we saw the life of Joseph and God working faithfully and graciously in the life of Joseph. And he was preparing um, what we're going to see later, all of Israel and, and his family to uh, come here to Egypt later and to be provided for. But if you would recall, God gave us a glimpse into only one of the other brothers' lives, and it was Judah's. Judah, if you will, it seemed right after, not long probably after, that they sold him into slavery, he leaves home, if you would recall. Again, are all the brothers in sin and, 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 and grossly away from God? Yes, they are. But with Judah, he possibly out of guilt, we talked about that last week, is that all of them have been dealing with this guilt for 20 years. And they immediately, when something starts going wrong in their life, their attention goes directly, this is because of what we did to Joseph. But if you will recall with Judah, Judah again, he left the family for some years. He would go off into the world and go into even, even more gross sin, into, a, into adultery, into all sorts of things. Um, but again, uh, then it, it pulls back to now. Now God has worked in Judah's life over those years. Um, and he is getting him to the point where what did Judah just now do? Again, the man that wanted his, his brother dead, but settled for sl selling him into slavery to make some money off of him. Now he is laying his life on the line for all of them. Don't miss that. He is laying his life down on the line for all of them. And he's going to do it again in a little bit as well. So I think this is something that God does not want us to miss. This is the work of God. Amen. For someone to have been so far gone and so far even into the world after that, that God would deal so graciously with them, but work in their heart in a mighty way. Amen. I'm going to tell you, God has done that with us as well. We were so far gone. We were lost. We were in sin. We were in darkness. But has God reached us and continues to work in amazing ways in our heart and in our life? Amen. But again, we see that. And um, I'll even tell you this. It's going to be, here's another grace of God. It's going to be through the tribe of Judah that God would bring his promised Messiah. Amen. What a blessing. What a privilege. And again, all through the life of a man who was once so far gone. Go now to uh, next, if you will. Um, he puts his life on the line and he says, look, I, it will be on me if he doesn't come back. I'll bear this blame forever. Verse 11 picks up and it says, And their father Israel said unto them, uh, If it must be so now, do this. Take, a, take of the best fruits in the land um, in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, um, spices and myrrh and nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hand. And the money that was brought again in the mouth of the sacks, carry it again in your hand. Peradventure, it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise and go again unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man. Then he may send, um, then he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. This is something very important as well. Not only is God working in a mighty way through Judah, but God's also still working in a mighty way through Jacob. Amen. Know this is that we've seen God do this before. We've seen um, Jacob get to a point where he's actually, he was actually between a rock and a hard place with no options, but that was even of his own making, if you would recall. It was even of his own sin. And he would battle that night with God, a battle of wills, if you will. And he would battle with God, but what would happen, what must happen, happen. He had to lay down his will and throw himself at the mercy of God. There was only one option, amen? Let me just do what must be done. Let me follow God and let me plead for him for mercy, amen? He's doing the same thing again, if you would see. He again... Pushed it off as long as he can. 
Jude have actually said, look, that we've wasted time here, valuable time. We don't know, he didn't say this, but again, they don't know what was even happening to Simeon, and he was locked up in prison there. And they themselves are starving again. They ran out of food, and again, he, he did not want to make this decision. He did not want to potentially even put his youngest son into harm's way, but now he said, if it must be so, and it was. It must happen. And he did, but I love that prayer, uh, that, that what he said. It says, and God Almighty give you mercy before the man. Amen. And then he said, God Almighty give mercy to you. And again, he's saying that this is in God's hand now. This is my only option. I'm going to do it. And we're just going to put it in God's hand and just pray for mercy. He even prayed, look, that, our other, that your other brother will come back and that Benjamin would return. But he said, if, if, I, if I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. And that's a pretty stern statement. We might not have ever been in a similar exact situation as he is in, but you might have been in similar situations where we had just honestly have to say, I cannot do anything else. I'm going to have to throw my hands up and trust God and pray for God's will to be done. And, he, and again, he, he, he hoped for mercy. He hoped that they would come back, but you know what? He also surrendered, what, what if it's not God's will that they even come back? He also, to, again, all in all, he submits to God's will no matter what. Amen. God wants us to be a people that would do the same, amen? Not just with big things like this, but that we would trust God and follow God no matter what, amen? If you will, what, what does it go on to say next? Verse 15, and again as we get there, they're on their way back with the gifts, with the extra money, with the repayment, again, uh, that they're taking again because they, they're hoping it was an oversight that the money got sent back to them by accident. So they take all of this with them. They're going back. But again, I challenge you, all they're seeing right now is their guilt still. They're burdened by their guilt of their, their sin in the past that they've just, just recently brought to light that they've been trying to hide this whole time. And so all they're going to see is the judgment that is due to their sin. But I challenge you to look at the constant grace that is being worked in this next event that's going to happen. Verse 15, it says, And the men took that present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon. Thank the Lord he didn't say slay them, amen? No, go slay uh, food for them. Go slay an animal for them. Uh, do you see the grace though? He says, and he sees Benjamin with them, what he was wanting, what he was testing them with, and I believe making sure that they didn't do the same thing to Benjamin that they tried to do to him, make sure that they are not still caught up in hatred and jealousy, and that they've tried to get rid of Benjamin just like they tried to with him. But the moment that he sees Benjamin with them, he tells the, the ruler, the overseer of his house, look, go prepare a meal. I'm coming home at noon. Amen. Invites them into their home, his home. The things that we're going to see in a minute, he's treating them like a, a beloved and prized house guest. He is. He's not treating them in any a way that you just treat maybe a, just anyone who's just coming up for more food in Egypt. It says this, verse 17, it says, And the man did as Joseph bade, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house, and the men were afraid, the brothers were afraid, because they were brought into Joseph's house and they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time um, are we brought in that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen um, and our asses. Again, they believe that, that he's going to try to get even with them. 
They believe that's all of what's happened in verse 19. It says, and they came near to the steward of Joseph's house and they communed with him at the door of the house and said, oh, sir, we came indeed down. So pause here for a minute. I love this. They know that they're being invited back to the house. They think it's all going to go south from here. So they start pleading with the, the, with the other man who's in charge. They start trying to explain themselves and to defend themselves about what all went down last time. It said, verse 20, it said, and, and said, Oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we came to the end that we opened our sacks and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Um, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again to um, in our hand, and other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell you who put our money in our sacks. And he said, this is what the man says to them, Peace be to you, fear not, your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Again, we received your money. We knew you paid for it. But then what does he say? What does the man say? It's okay. D calm down. Don't fear. He actually says this. Your God, the God of your father, he did this. Amen. He gave your treasure in your sacks. So pause here for just a moment as we're seeing all this grace unfold. Grace even in light of their guilt and in light of their sin, even their past sin. We see all this grace being poured out. We see Joseph indeed showing this grace. Amen. He is blessing them. He is being good to them. But you know what is important? That we give credit where credit's due. Amen. It's God. God's doing it. God has shown Joseph grace. God has been good to Joseph. God has, uh, God is leading Joseph. Look, now here's the opportunity to share that grace back, right? He, they, he knows, Joseph knows full well how gracious God is, and he knows that it's God's will to, for us to be gracious too, amen? And he's simply doing the will of God. This is God working through Joseph. Today as well, again, if God leads, leads us to do anything good, let me tell you, it's, it's God that deserves the glory, this isn't something that we would just do in and of ourselves. No, we're, we're sinners. We're naturally not good. We're naturally selfish. Uh, but thanks be to God, amen, that he would do something different in us. What does it go on to say next? It says, and, and he brought Simeon unto them. He brings Simeon out to them. It says, and that's another act of grace though right there. Simeon's not dead and he's returned to the brothers. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house, more grace. He gave them water. And they washed their feet. Their feet are getting washed again, like a prized guest into your home. And it says, and he gave their asses provender. Now he's feeding their animals that they rode on. It says, and they made ready the present uh, against Joseph. Um, came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present um, which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to, to the earth, bowed themselves to him to the earth again. They're trying to throw themselves at the mercy of him. And they're, again, they're trying to warm up to him. Again, he's just pouring out grace on them. But they're trying to, what I think they're trying to appease their, their guilt. They're trying to repay for what they've done. They're trying to make up for it. They're trying to bring that gift. But I'll just tell you, the gift doesn't get much attention in a minute either. Again, same way when it comes with God. Again, we're sinners. Maybe we've been running and maybe you've, I don't know your heart. I don't know everyone here who's saved and who's not. But maybe you've been in sin your whole life. Maybe you've been running from God your whole life. Maybe you've been trying to battle with the guilt of that sin. Maybe you've been trying to cover it up in certain ways. Maybe you try to approach God with a gift. You think that's going to cover for your sin, but let me tell you, it won't. The only way that we come to God is we come humbly, throwing ourselves down at His, His mercy and His grace. Amen? And confessing and repenting our sin, of our sin and then trusting in, the, in Jesus. 
the Messiah that did come, that did pay our sin debt, and is the only way that sinful people can be made right and come to God. Amen? It's the only way we can come to Him. Verse 27, what happens next? And He said, and He asked them of their welfare. Probably not the first comment they're going to think Joseph's going to say. But did you recall that they, they come, they bring their gift, they bow down before him, and he goes straight into just asking them, How, how's everybody doing? How are you doing? How are you honestly doing? It said, and he said, is your father well? The old man of whom ye spake, is he yet alive? Is he still alive? And they answered, thy servant, our, our father is in good health. He is yet alive. Again, grace, amen. Care, caring. And it said they bowed down their heads and made obe obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God, it, God be gracious unto thee, my son. Again, I love that. He asks, he acquires, is this, is this the brother that you spoke of that you had? And again, knowing full well, that's my brother. That's not just, even just my half brother. That's my full brother. That's the one I've been wondering if he's alive or not uh, and haven't seen him, uh, and now I'm seeing him. And it says, and, and he even asks that God would be gracious unto him. Verse 30, it says, And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon um, his brother, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Set on bread. You see that? He sees the beauty of all this. They're all back, and there's his brother. He wonders if he's alive. And he sees him, and he, he can't control it. Again, he's, he's moved. He's glad. He's joyous. God has brought the whole family there. He's, he's brought his brother, then he's alive. And he, again, he runs out. He finds, um, he, he hides himself to where he could weep in his chamber. Then he washes it up, covers it all up. He comes back and he says, now, serve the food. Verse 32, it says, And they, um, set on, they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which did eat with themselves or which did eat with him by themselves because the Egyptians, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Hebrews. Pause there a second. They're all the, the Hebrew brothers, they're all sitting over here. They're eating separate. The Egyptians are over there. They're eating separate. All of this. And it explains that. They believe it's an abomination. Hebrews, they're nomadic people, but they're also, they're also shepherds. And to the Egyptians, this was an unclean thing. They didn't want to eat at the same table and eat with them. Eat with them. So that's what's going on there. Verse 33, it said, and, and they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled one at the other. What just happened? When they set them down to the table, they number all 11 of them in order from, from oldest to youngest. And I'll just tell you, that doesn't happen by accident to just number all of them if, if they would say if by random, which it wasn't here, by random. It wasn't by random because Joseph knows his brothers and he has them seated in, in this. But they look and they marvel, wow, how did this happen? And it says, 34, it says, and he took and sent messes unto them from before him but Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. See what's happening. I love this. After they're seated down, just look at, think about this. The, the servants bring out all the food. They put messes of food on all, all of their plates. They're all well fed. It says all of them eat with him and drink with him, and they're merry. They're fed. They're fed well. But then it also says that with Benjamin, though, he has five times of all that on their plate. What, what is he doing? 
I believe Jacob's, excuse me, I believe Joseph's testing them again. He's testing them and seeing are they gonna are they gonna look on Benjamin now and seeing that he's being uh, uh, showed favor and given extra blessing, are they gonna look on him now and again they don't they don't know that Joseph speaks their language because he's been speaking with an interpreter. But I believe he's gonna see, are they gonna start speaking about how they hate how they hate Benjamin and show that hatred for him. But again, thankfully they don't. Amen. God's worked in their hearts. God worked in their life. It, it ended there with they, they were just eating and they're merry. Here's the interesting thing. If you would think about this for a minute, here's just an encouragement to you and I. We shouldn't ever be jealous, no matter what. Amen. We shouldn't ever be covetous. We shouldn't, for instance, the brothers, which here they don't, they shouldn't look upon their younger brother, their youngest brother Benjamin, they shouldn't look upon that and see what in the world's going on here, this isn't fair. God tells us, do not be covetous, amen? Don't look at what your neighbor has and covet after it and, and wish and, and gripe and complain that, and wish that you had it, amen? Because here's the truth, God knows our needs, amen? And God abundantly meets those needs. God knows, God knows our needs, but he also knows how much we can handle too. Amen? We don't know how much we can handle. I, I don't believe we do. Um, again, there's times where people get uh, more riches and more things um, brought upon themselves or they might seek after that. And a lot of times they show they, could, they cannot handle that. There's times where it ruins their whole life. There's times where they're still not content. They're still wanting more. There's times where it ruins their relationships with their families. But very importantly, there are many times where they don't think they even need God anymore. But here's the truth. I think we're like these brothers. All of us, we have been giving a mess of blessing thrown on our plate. And I'm just going to tell you, none of us deserve it. If there comes a time where another brother might have five times that thrown on their plate again let us not be jealous amen let us not be covetous thank god for the grace that he's graciously given any of us amen so again he tests them thankfully they do indeed pass the test um, but if you will uh, let's look at this very final test that's going to happen again let's go quickly through the next narrative if you will verse one it says and um, and, he, and he commanded the steward of the house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. Again, fill it all with food, more grace. Fill it all, as much as they can carry, more grace. And then he said, and do, do this, put the man, money back in the sacks. They're going home with it for free. Um, again, more grace. But here's where the test comes in. Verse 2, it says, And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money. And he did, and he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. And soon, uh, as soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses, and they, excuse me, and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, Joseph said unto the steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, when you catch up with them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is, is not this in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he de, de, divineth? Again, this is... What he's going to tell them, again, he's going to catch up with them and he's going to say, why have you returned the good graces of Joseph with this great evil of stealing from Joseph? And he actually says about that cup, again, this is not the truth about the cup. Again, this cup, it says a cup of, of divineth. Again, he, he's speaking about he can foretell the future with this cup. That's not the case. Well, the interesting thing is Joseph has been able to know certain events, and all of them know that. All of them in Egypt know that. He has been able to know of events that were going to come, but, but how? 
Because God gave him the gift to read and interpret dreams. Amen? That's how. It's not by cup. But it's interesting, that's what he tells them in verse 6. It says, And he um, overtake them, and he spake unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servants should, be, should do according to this thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sack's mouth, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. Um, how then should we steal out of the Lord's house silver or gold? They say, look, we didn't, we didn't do this. We didn't do this. Don't you recall that we already brought back the money that was put in our sacks last time? We're trying to be honest. We're not going to steal from him. Verse 9, it says, With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die. And we also um, will be my Lord's bondsmen. And he said, Now also let it be according unto thy words, he with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Pause there for a minute. So what the brothers tell the man that came after them, um, they, they say, look, whoever then you find this cup with, you kill them. You kill that person. And then it said, for the rest of us, we'll go back and we'll live our lives as slaves to you. And he said, he said okay, but then he's even more gracious with the agreement. He said, no, look, what will happen is the one that it's found with, he will come back as a slave and will stay here in Egypt as a slave. And the rest of you, you will be blameless. You can go, right? So what happens next? It says in 11, it says, Then they speedily took, um, took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes and uh, ladded every man his ass and returned to the city. And Judah and his um, brethren came to Joseph's house, so he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. So again, it's discovered with who? Benjamin. It's discovered with Benjamin, and what did they do? I, their response is good. Their response shows that they do indeed actually care for their brother. They rent their clothes. They think, oh no, what now? They really do indeed that harm is going to come upon their youngest brother and they're torn up over it. Again, and they go back to the city and what do they do? They fall down at Joseph's feet. Again, what really we should do with God Throw ourselves down at his grace and mercy. Amen. Throw ourselves down at his feet. And they do that. They humble themselves before him. Throw themselves down at his mercy. Verse 15. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine again? Don't you know that, that I can tell the future? Again, he's going along with this. Again, he does know certain events that God gives him, but not to the extent that they think. Verse 16, it says, And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What, do we, what can we even say? What shall we speak? Um, or how shall we clear ourselves? They don't even know what to say. They don't know how to clear themselves. Again, they're at, they're at wit's end. No other option. They're just thrown down at the mercy of this man and ultimately the mercy of God. It said, God hath found out, they say this, God hath found out um, the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup was found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in, in whose hand um, the cup is found, he shall be my servant. As for you, get, up, get you up in peace um, unto your father." Again, don't you see that they're, they're confessing it again? They're saying, look, this is happening. They think they're, again, guiltless here. But again, they think that God is repaying them for their sin. They think it's judgment time. They think again that the, the blood of Joseph is at their hand and they think that blood is being required. So again, they plead this and... Um, but again, he tells them, look, here's what's going to happen. Just the one that took it, he's staying. All of you rest, go, leave. Go back to your father. 
Verse 18, it says, Then Judah, again, I love this, God working in the heart of Judah. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears. And let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. Again, approaching very humbly. Approaching very humbly and even just praying, asking, I even beg you, would you let me speak with you for a moment? Please, don't let your anger come against us. Just please let me share this. Verse 19, it says, my, my Lord asked his servants. He's going to explain it all. My Lord asked my servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And, and we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man and a child of his old age, a little one, and his, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. Again, they're just sharing the truth with him. And... And, well, they think Joseph's dead, but that's not the case. At verse 21, it says, And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, and I may um, set mine eyes upon him, upon him. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father should die. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall um, see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up unto the, thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us. Um, and... Uh, and then it said, then will, we go, then will we go down? For we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, Ye, ye know that my wife bare, um, bare me two sons, and the one w went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. And, and if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to the servant of my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass, um, when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die." And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of his servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, I, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear a blame to my father forever. Now therefore, listen if you will, now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For now shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come to my father. Again, he explains all of it to him, and he explains, look, if I go back, if you keep Benjamin, my youngest brother, and I go back, I know this will happen. My, my father will be again with the father. Sadly, his life is bound up in this youngest son, his beloved son. And he indeed believes he would, he would die of grief if, if, if something happens to happen to Benjamin. So again, they, he shares that. This will happen. Um, and then he, he says, and he, again, I love this. It shows his repentant heart. He puts his life in, in the place of Benjamin. He says, instead, look, instead of this happening, uh, let me stay here. I will be a slave. I'll serve the rest of my life as a slave to you. Please just let Benjamin go home with my brothers to my father. And then again, he said, for how shall I go up to my father and the lad not go with me? Let's peradventure I see this evil that shall come on my father. Again, this evil that would happen, this horrible thing that would happen of seeing his father go into grief and dying, going to the grave because of this. 
I love that though. He says, how shall I do that? How shall I go back and, and see that happen? Again, sadly, that's something that 20 years ago they didn't mind doing. They didn't mind, again, one, they didn't mind doing that great evil towards their brother, Joseph. But they also didn't mind um, not only t trying to take the life of their brother, but they also didn't mind taking a son from a father. They also didn't mind covering up, trying to cover up their sin with a lie. The father thought this whole year that he was um, ripped to pieces by a wild animal and was dead. Again, and, and sadly, we see they, they tried to, to handle that guilt through these years, but I love this. God made sure that their sin came to light. He made sure that, that they confessed their sin. He made sure that they repented of this, and God is just pouring out grace. Amen? But I love this, this great act of God working in the ringleader. The one who 20 years ago was far gone. But now what is he doing? He is offering his life in the place of Benjamin. Amen? And I love this. This is the beauty and poetry of God. God weaving this story together. Judah is laying his life down willingly on the line for Benjamin. But again, through the line of Judah, Jesus was going to come. Of what all of it was about. Jesus coming. And we're going to see in a minute, spoiler alert, we're going to look at the next chapter next week, but spoiler alert, Joseph can't take it anymore. He pours out everything to them that he's their brother. And, and again, we're going to know Judah's not going to have to offer his life there, right? He was willing. He was repentant and he was willing, but he wasn't going to have to do that. But with Jesus, let me tell you, that was a plan that was, that was in motion from the foundation of the world. Amen? For the foundation of the world, Jesus was the lamb slain. Amen? That plan had to happen. Amen? There was no other way. If there be any other way that this cup should, could pass from me, let it be so, Jesus said. But however, not my will be done, but your will be done, Father. Amen? And that's exactly what happened. There was no other way. There was no other way for your sin debt and my sin debt and the, the sin of the world to be paid for other than through Jesus going and, and dying on our behalf and then paying our sin debt and then doing what? Again, even though we're guilty, even though we're sinners, um, offering this great salvation to you and me. If we would no longer try to cover that guilt and cover that sin, but with, that we would see the truth, that we would um, come and confess before God, agree with God, I'm a sinner. I do deserve death. I do deserve hell. But I'm repenting of my sin and I'm pleading, Jesus, would you save my soul? Amen? That's grace. Man, we serve a God of grace. Amen? Amen? We serve a perfect God of judgment. We, see a, we serve a perfect God of love. But I plead with each and every one of us, again, God knows every heart here. He knows every heart listening. But again, if you have not received that grace from God through Jesus, His Son, if you've not received that salvation yet, I plead with you, would you do that? And then for all of us, believer, would we be reminded today, God's in control, Amen. God was in control in every event here. God was in control of, of it all, seeing his plan come to pass. But would we trust God is the same way today? God knows when uh, the number of hairs on our head, he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground. God knows, amen, and God cares. Would we trust God? At times where, again, where we're brought to um, no other option, when there's times where we're between a rock and a hard place, but any time, would we come to God and just surrender to Him and just trust Him and follow Him? But also, I, I challenge us today, being reminded of this great grace, which again, we don't deserve, would we be a people this week even that are committed yet again, God, would you use me? Would you help me and give me opportunity 
for you to share your good grace through me. Maybe there's someone in your life that, again, you may know, they may not deserve grace. They, you may, they may not be deserved to treat, be treated well, but again, none of us do. None of us deserve it. But would we be people that would show the good grace of God? And would we be a people that would share that there is one way, and that's Jesus the Messiah? Would we share that today and this week? Let's bow in a word of prayer as our life feeds.